Franco, it's hard to learn a language. I'm trying to learn German at the minute. I went with German because I just thought it was funny. Hazelnut, Hasselnuss, it's a funny language. <laughs> and I'm using Duolingo. Do people use Duolingo? It gives you like a composite sentence. It sounds like I'm sponsored. I'm not. Like, it's just good. It's a good app. Um, they give you composite sentences. They get progressively harder. Um, one of my friends is on really advanced German at the minute, and one of the sentences he had to translate the other week is, "It is a war crime." I'm not sure <laughs> when that's going to be useful. Really, sort of wandering around Berlin. This is how a crowd is disgusting. It is a war crime. How disgusting it is. <laughs> So, yeah, Peter's helping me out. Peter is hes a really funny guy. He loves comedy, and we go to the pub a lot, and we sort of riff on comedic ideas. He loves to create comedy characters. He likes to create the ideas of what people could be like. And he's created one that I love, which is the idea of a homeless man who's into really specific things. So, you know that most homeless people will ask for an Afro cup of tea, that kind of thing. He likes the idea of a homeless man that goes, Sorry, mate, I can see you're busy. You haven't got a manual for a Fiat Punto, have you? Just... <laughs> Really specific stuff. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I shouldn't ask, I shouldn't ask. You haven't got a Fabergé egg, have you? Just really <laughs> niche. Brilliant, brilliant idea. But he's also a prankster, he's a troll. And I'm a troll, but he did it to me and I didn't like it. It was one of the worst things that happened to me. And actually, funny enough, it's happened to me here. We were in the pub the week before I was doing the Royal Variety. It was only with Charles and Camilla, not the proper ones, who gives a shit? And, <laughs> He said to me, he said, how are you feeling about Royal Variety? And I said, I'm really nervous, like, I don't know what I'm going to say. There's, like, loads of protocol. Obviously, you can't swear, but there's loads of things you wouldn't realise where, like, little things that you just can't say. And I said, I'm really nervous, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he knew what he was doing, because he went, well, you wouldn't want to say Diana was murdered, would you? <laughs> no, why did you put that in my head the week before Royal Variety? <laughs> It was rolling around in my head the whole bloody week, and I was stood side of stage. It was literally just there at Royal Variety because it was in this room, and I was quaking with nerves. And I don't normally get that nervous about stand up, got my little jacket on. I was really shivering with nerves. I could see Charles and Camilla through a gap in the curtain. They were up there somewhere, proper shaking. And I was going through my notes on my phone to remind myself of what I was going to do, what my material was going to be. And I shouldn't have told him, but I told him what time I was going on stage. And he texted me seconds before I went on stage. <laughs> and it was just a picture of Diana on her wedding day. <laughs> And then underneath, don't let her down. <laughs> Absolute bell end. <laughs> so he's been helping out. I say he's been helping out, he's been giving me bad advice, actually. There was an archway in the living room, and it had a fireplace in it years ago, and I didn't know what to do with it. And he went, oh, you like posh things, oh, you like posh things, why well, you get a log burner? So I got a log burner on his advice, since discovered from a quite sanctimonious friend of mine, shouldn't have got a log burner. They came round, they were like, actually, you shouldn't have got a log burner, actually. It's very bad for the environment to burn logs. I'll send you a book about it. And to be fair, the book burnt beautifully. That was lovely. <laughs> Farrow and Ball paint, he suggests. He's like, oh, you like posh things? Get posh paint, Farrow and Ball paint. Farrow and Ball has a shop in Solihull in the Midlands, in Birmingham. Solihull, it's still, it's still Birmingham. It's the posh part of Birmingham. So there's still vomit on the streets, but there's Monge too in it in Solihull. <laughs> the colour names in Farrow and Ball, Elephant's Breath. <laughs> Grey. That's an abstract name they've given to Grey. I think you should be able to go into Farron Ball with your own colour names, abstract names, and they just have to create the colour they think you're on about. You go and say, yes, I think you're painting the living room. Disappointed wife. Just see what they come up with. <laughs> mm, I was thinking in the bedroom, David Dickin, your son. Just whatever they think that is. <laughs> well, the guy in the Farron Ball shop, so posh, he's like, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like that. <laughs> right. I've realised this... I'm not sure if you'll get this reference. I've realised that's quite close to an impression that I do of Jesse from Little Mix doing a Jamaican accent. <laughs> OK? Some of you know this. If you don't, treat yourself after the show. Jesus. Oh, right. How to describe this? So, um, Little Mix are a band. I'm sure you know Little Mix, four of them. Um, uh, they were doing, like, a promo video, I think it was, and they had these um, cards that had accents on, and Jesse, one of the members, got Jamaican, and this is literally what she did. She went... Oh, um... Body on it, that was it. <laughs> so, that, that was the guy in Fire and Ball, he was that posh. Body on it, that was how posh. <laughs> I went in, I said hello, he went, Body on it. You're Jamaican. Body on it. <laughs> um, 